me and my wife, we joined the YMCA in Archdale. And believe it or not, one of the managers came to me and asked me if I would teach Bible there in the YMCA. And to me, that is God opening a door. But He told me He was going to open some doors for me. So He opened that door up, and I've been there oh, three, three months or so. But I started teaching love oh, a year and three months ago. And after we closed the church, I've been praying about several things that I needed to know from God. What do you want me to do? And I prayed hours and hours and upon hours and I had friends. We'd gather together and we'd pray about it. And we were having a meeting about three weeks ago and and the Lord said, um, when I send you out, I want you to stand up and preach. So that was one of the answers to what am I to do about the church. When I send you out, I want you to stand up and preach. Well, last... uh, Let's see. Actually, it was this morning. (laughs) This morning. I was in the shower getting ready to uh, go to uh, the Y to teach. And he said this to me. When I send you out, I want you to preach love. So wherever I go out, I'm to teach love. And in teaching love, I have learned so much. I have learned so much. Did you know that you can teach love, but at the same time teach on financial prosperity? You can teach love and you can teach on righteousness. You can teach love and you can teach on healing. Because love Himself this is a part of Him. If you teach faith, that's a part of Him. If you teach righteousness, you, that's a part of Him. If you teach finances, that's a part of Him. I, anything that you teach out of the Word of God, you can teach in love. And to teach love, you're not just teaching about something. You're teaching about an entity. For God is love. I've noticed uh, over the last year, I've I've got what I would call uh, part of the pastor's anointing. And if you sit under him, I guess you would you would likely, very likely, have some of His anointings to come on you. A lot of times I'll make notes. I have made, you know, spend some time making notes. And this is what I'm going to preach on today. Maybe use one note, and then God takes me off on this spiritual trail. He'll bring me back to that one (laughs) note. And I think, well, I'm going to read the next next one. And I don't. He takes me on another spiritual trail. And by the way, God told me, I, I talked to him and you know, I said, well, you took me on another rabbit trail. And God said for me not to say that. He said, that is not true. You preached the Word of God in love and in truth. 
So I found out another thing about God. He is very precise in His wording. I thought it was okay to say it. And He told me not to do that. He said, this, is, this comes out of the realm of the Spirit. I'm leading you. There was another thing He taught me. I was saying I was uh, being bound by the Spirit to teach this or that. And he, he told me not to say that. He said, say, pressed in the Spirit. You're being pressed in, my, in, in your Spirit by me. I'm pressing you in, into to going this way or going that way. I'm saying all these things to teach you about love. And I, have, I have so learned some things about love that I didn't know. Didn't know. And being the greatest teacher in the universe, He's teaching me. There's many things He talks about in, in, in the Bible about love, and we just skim over them. They're very important things to Him. But we just kind of skim over them, and, and, and we really don't check on it and see what it means. Or we don't ask Him. And I've gotten into some of that. And, and, and people, I'm telling you, it's a marvelous trail. If you would, and this is going to be the foundation of Scripture, and uh, if you're going to put a title on this thing, Brother Bill, it would be, Behold, What Manner of Love. And we're going to go to First John. 1 John 3. And we're going to go to verse 1. 1 John 3, 1. Behold... What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew Him not. Now, when he says sons of God, that also means daughters of God. When he's talking about men, he's talking about mankind. Uh, and if you remember, Jesus taught um, that you know the Sadducees came to him and wanted to know about uh, spiritual things to trap him in, in some of his sayings, and that didn't work because he told them that they they didn't know the Bible. They didn't know the Scriptures. The Scriptures they had, even then, they should have known. Let us go to 1 John 4, 7. In my, in my Bible, one page over. 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Now in the minds of men and women of the world today, they don't have the conception of love. Uh, my wife and I, we like to watch these programs on television uh, about buying homes. And we especially like to watch the ones that they have in Hawaii. 
because we get to see places we've been, you know, and oh, well, there, there's so and so. You remember blah, 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 and so on and so forth. But anyway, so many times these people go into these homes, and I don't love this. Do you ever watch it? And you'll hear that often, won't you? I just don't love this. And you'll hear people talk about that. And love, the word love is thrown around so loosely. I was so amazed uh, just a little while ago about the, the news that was on. The news on Channel 12. Uh, this lady has got a, a new group of people together about bullying in school. They're going to stop bullying in school. And I just walked through when they was, she was talking about what they were anxious to get started and they're using a football and the football is going to be sent around all over and it's got certain words on it, you know, about bullying. And I said, she's going at it the wrong way. They took God out of the church. I mean, out of the school. <laughs> a lot of a lot of church take God out too. But they've, they've taken God out of the schools. Now they're reaping the benefits. That kind of a benefit, which is not a good benefit, you know, to the devil it is. But they've taken that out of the, the church. Prayer out of the church. I remember when I was just growing up, just a young boy, we had prayer every morning. Every morning. Our teacher would pray. Didn't matter whether I was in first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. And now when we got up on say seventh, eighth grade, I don't remember recalling that. But another thing they did, they they were they pledged allegiance to the flag often in a, in while we were growing up. They were teaching the children discipline. Boy, they would turn you over and spank you right there in front of everybody. And they didn't mind doing it. Now, I understand it's against the law. They can't do that. Well, that ain't right. Why are you teaching them? Why are you taking them to school? Send them to school. You're to teach them whatever they need to be taught. And sometimes you need to teach them right then. You shouldn't do that. And there's consequences. What's the consequences? Bend over my knee and I'm going to show you. But see, they're not allowed to do that anymore. And the more you take God out of anything, the more the devil is going to have place in that, that arena. I mean, it's just going to be that way. If you let the devil root God out, he's going to take over. You know, I've heard this all my life. Uh, if you give the devil a ride, he's going to drive. Somewhere along the line, he's going to take over. Because you've let him ride with you. And to me, that that's what's happening to our school system. That's what's happening to our, our world. You've got to be politically correct. And, and these people make up politically correct rules as they see fit. You can't do this, and you can't do that, and, and if you'll pay attention, most of it is coming against the things of God. You can find some area in that political correctness that they have uh, given us, that's a slice of God that they've thrown away. And they keep slicing the Bible up. And God told me something here, uh, uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago. And I wrote, I wrote it down. He said, without love in the earth, men would eradicate themselves. And then he gave me Scripture. There's Scripture to that. 
God said if I hadn't shortened the days, there would be no flesh on the earth. Just as soon as God said that to me, I had the Scripture. It just come up in my spirit. If there were no love in the world, man would eradicate mankind. Man, that's a, that's a strong statement. But you can see it coming to pass. Uh, Hitler, you think that man loved anybody? I think not. <laughs> I think not. Okay, let's go to 1 John 3.14. 1 John 3.14. And there, there's something else I have learned. I have learned to absolutely love the first epistle of John. 1 John 3.14 We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not the brethren abideth in death. And this would even shore up just what we got through saying. That if there was no love in the earth, we're the salt of the earth. You know what that salt is? Love. We're love beings. We're supposed to love everybody. Does that make sense to you? I'd, I'd never thought about it. I, I was teaching one day, and that just came out of my mouth. We are the salt of the earth. The Bible says that. But that salt is love. We're holding together righteousness, goodness, faith, all the things that makes up God. Everything that God is. That's what we're here to do. For Him to manifest Himself through us. And love Himself is manifesting love in us and through us. You know, when we lay hands on the sick and they recover, we lay hands on them out of love. And God is manifesting Himself to us by the anointing of God. Where's, where does that anointing come from? It comes from God. You know, I was thinking, and I was thinking this this afternoon, and I'd never thought it before while I was preparing. Um, I remembered when, when I got saved. I was Oh, 15 years old. Somewhere in the neighborhood. Might have been 14, but somewhere around, around 15, 14, 15. And uh, <laughs> there was, I was in this church. I went to church with this guy, and I was in church, and there was uh, an aisle right down the center of the church. And I can tell you, I was sitting about middle ways about the middle of the, the section, you know. And I saw this man coming to me, and I, I just said to myself, I hope he's not coming to see me. I don't want to talk to him. That happened. I, I mean, I remember saying that and thinking that to myself. He turned around and went back. He was coming straight to me. And they, they went on worshiping a little while. And this woman, she was on the worship team. She come down off the platform and come back. And I could just feel the love of God emanating from her. You know, and I, she's coming off the platform and she's coming toward me. Just as soon as I saw her coming toward me, I could just, just sense that love emanating. And tears started walling up in my eyes. She wanted to know if I wanted to get saved. And I said, yes, I do. 
And it was a simple thing, real quick. But on the other hand of that, I was working for a, a, an older gentleman and we were remodeling his parents' home. They had a big two-story house, a huge house. And they were going to remodel it and sell the one they had across the road. And they did. But they wanted to remodel it first. Um, and so and he wanted a, a basement put under it. So we jacked the house up and, he, and I'm mixing mud and, and carrying blocks for this man to, to build that, that basement. And then after that we started working on the inside. We did the ceiling and the walls and all this. And, and I worked for him. And he, I lived with him. You know, him and his wife. I lived with them. They gave me a room fed me, and then paid me also. And that was, that was pretty neat for a 14, 15 year old guy, you know. But then I got saved and every time I'd get money, he'd pay me. And it wasn't a whole lot of money, maybe $25 a week. But I wanted to give it to the church. I wanted to give it all to the church. And I did. I just so loved being saved. And I it didn't matter if there's somebody out in the parking lot that didn't come into church. How, if I saw them, I'd have to run to them and, and, and talk to them about the Lord. Jesus said He would manifest His love towards us. What does that mean? I was part of that love being manifest in me because I wanted everybody to know that same love that I had inside of me. And joy. Oh my, my, my. I had the greatest joy I've ever had in my life. And I got thinking about these things a while ago, while I was getting this, this message together, and I'm not even on my notes at all. <laughs> See, what have I read? Two or three notes? But anyway, um, the joy level has been so awesome. Have you ever done anything like um, go to a person and, and let's say give them $100 or something like that and there was a, a peace and a joy that $100 couldn't buy you? You, you've done those things, haven't you? That's the, uh, that's the manif manifestation of God's love. God's loving on you. You please Him. And, and His love manifests to you. It's an awesome thing. You know, and I've said this a lot of times, I'd, I'd rather have the things of God manifest in me and through me than have a a fence around the world and be able to call it my own. So there's nothing like it. There's nothing like the love of God being manifested in you. I've heard of people that they're grumbling and gripe about giving money, you know, well we had a lady come here one time. Matter of fact, Miss Karen was in the in the room when we were talking to her and she was so mad at her preacher because she, his, her preacher wasn't using her money like she wanted him to use it. <laughs> I tried to explain her when she released that. She released that into God's hands. That wasn't her business. You know, I, 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 I was nice about it, but do you remember that? It was a long time ago. But I hadn't forgotten it. She was angry. And she was wanting to get filled with the Holy Ghost and she couldn't get filled with the Holy Ghost because she was angry. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> we tried to get her filled with the Holy Ghost, but I, I, I almost knew that she would not get filled with the Holy Ghost because of this anger she had inside of her. It wasn't her money. When she, when she released it, that was God's money. If it was a 10% of her, her salary, you know, it belonged to God anyway. Hallelujah. 
Um, let's go to Romans 5 5. Five, five, Romans five, five. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Okay, my first question would be, if I didn't know the Scripture, would be, when was that given to me? When did God give me this love He's talking about? We know that when we got born again, we have this love in us. God gave us a, a portion of His love. We know we can't find agape love in the Old Testament. It's not there. That love was manifest when the Son of God was manifest in the earth. The agape love. Why? Because God could not deal with the spirit man. He couldn't put that kind of love in that man. That man couldn't, couldn't hold it. Why? Because that love has a glory about it. That is awesome. Do you remember the, the time they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant into the city? And, and they, they were told not to touch. Whatever you do, don't touch that Ark. And it was about to fall and the guy touched it and he died instantly. And God said He killed him. Well, God did, but He didn't. It was that awesomeness of God that pushes sin away from Him. That pushes evil away from God. The glory of God. A sinner could not come in, in anywhere near the presence of God because just the glory of God would keep it from Him. God cannot sin because He's love. That's why John speaks a lot about sin and love. You know, the absence of love is usually ending up in sin. Does that make sense? If you don't love God, if you don't love your brother, that's a sin. You can't love God if you can't love your brother. Because how can you love Him that you can... How can you not love Him that you can see and love God whom you have not seen? So, <laughs> if you'll pay attention to God's words, you'll find out real quickly, God is smart. <laughs> he knows how to put His words together. <laughs> and they're simple. They don't have to be hard. You know, you know I've actually heard men speak you need an interpreter and they spoke in the same language I did but they just using words about that long I didn't know what they meant so when they got through I was more confused than I was when I went to the meeting uh, I went to a lot of uh, well I wouldn't say you'd call them meeting but learning seminars in workplaces uh, they have these teaching seminars to teach you to be better supervisors, so on and so forth. Well, sometimes they would have doctors who should have been men to write uh, dictionaries or something like that <laughs> because you couldn't understand them. Their, their diction was so, so far ahead of everybody in the class. You could ask, you could ask several people... Do you really know what he was talking about? No, I really don't. But that, that's not the way Jesus did things. He could take a little child and put him on his, on his knee and talk to him, you know? And the child would understand. Why? 
God says for us to teach the Word of God in love. Well, if you're going to do it, do it where it's palatable. Do it where, where, where even a child can understand it. You know what I'm saying? He shouldn't be more confused going out of the church than he was coming in. So, make that word real palatable to everybody. Just be simple. I'm glad I didn't learn any of those big words. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> to me, they're just not worth it. Okay, let's go to John. Big John. 13. Big John 13. Okay, Big John 13 and 34. Big John 13.34 A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. Now this is the new commandment now in that the old commandment of love was love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, at that time when that was written, that was as far as they could go. Because they didn't have the love of God in their heart. So they, they could only use, use uh, 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 what would you call it, brotherly love. That type of love. They could not use the agape love because they didn't have it in them. So, so now he's given us a new, new commandment, but it's the old commandment too. But it's for the New Testament uh, church. Love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. This is an awesome statement. By this will all men know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. He's talking about Christians loving other Christians. You know, it ought to be where if anybody got in trouble in church, financially or whatever, our love would be so great that we just storm the gates right then and help those people out of that problem. And then other people say, man, that's, that's, that's one great club right there. I've got to get into that club. I've never seen anybody do this before. See, it would be a drawing card for everybody else. He didn't tell us to love our cars and people would see our cars. And He didn't say uh, uh, people will know you by your wealth. That ain't what he said at all. He said love one another that all men would know that you're my disciples. I want you just to ponder in your heart this coming week about this kind of love. That if I love my neighbors as Jesus loved me, then men are going to see that love manifest and they'll want to join the church. You know, uh, a, a lot of times the problem with the church not growing is People know what goes on in the church. They know they're fighting in the church. Why would I want to be a part of that? There's an uproar in that church all the time. And they're not doing the pastor just right because 
They're keeping him in bondage. He's got holes in the bottom of his shoes. And they've got $600,000 in the bank and they're, they're letting their pastor walk around with holes in his shoes. Well, we want to keep him poor and we want to keep him humble. You're not going to keep him poor and humble either one. If you believe God, he can be rich and he don't have to put up that kind of garbage. But the church has that mindset. I'm telling you, I've heard it. I have absolutely heard it. I was in Turnersville, and this guy had this big bunch of turnip greens and turnips and things. And uh, he said, do you want some of these uh, turnip greens? And I said, yeah. I said, I don't mind to have a box of those. And he said, okay. And in a little while, he was leaving where he was at, and he was coming up and come back by where my, uh, my truck was, and he said, do you want more of these greens? He said, I really ought not give them to you because we need to keep you poor and humble. I'm telling you, the man told me that. <laughs> so I, I didn't take any more. <laughs> I'd like to have another box of them. <laughs> I, I would have put them in the freezer, you know, cooked them and put them in the freezer. Man, they were awesome. They were delicious. But anyway, that's the mindset of, of, of a lot of the churches. If deacons would do what they are supposed to according to the Bible, they're not to run the church. And I know for a fact. I've got friends that are deacons of church. And they run the church. They run everything about the church. Everything. The finances, everything about that church is run by deacons. That's not right. They're not anointed to do that. If God set a pastor in that church, that pastor is anointed. I'm going to tell you one of the number one problems with the church, just like this lady that we were talking about, is money. People wanting their money spent like they want it spent. I met another lady in Kernsville that was all upset about um, their church had built a big gym. With my money, they built, they built a big gym like it was only her money. You know? Well, they had the money and I didn't, I didn't see anything wrong with it. Of course, if it was me, I would say, let's give it to a church that needs it. <coughs> I know a little church um, I think he said they had about 150 and run about 150 all the time. I was talking to a pastor who was uh, not the pastor of that church. He he retired. Him, you know, he he retired. But he was talking about it, and he said they had six hundred thousand dollars in that church in the bank. Why have they got six hundred thousand dollars laying in a in a bank somewhere? Why could they not be a blessing to a church that needed that money? Things like that bother me. I, I, I just don't understand those things. And God's telling them to give, and they'll be given back to you. And then, then on top of that, God tells you what His measure is. And, and, and you know if God shakes the earth, if He's going to shake your money together, it's going to get a shaking. <laughs> think about it and then he's going to press it down and then he's going to run it over <laughs> I don't know where they missed that scripture <laughs> ok <laughs> we won't go there <laughs> oh, praise God um, let's go to big John fifteen nine. Fifteen nine, one page over. You got a Bible like mine. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye 
keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even if I, as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Now, that scripture says a lot. You could probably preach a good sermon just on that one scripture. Pay attention to the word abide. What does abide mean? Get up in the morning, you're in it. At noon time, you're in it. When you lay down at night, you're in it. Abide means be there all the time. And when you abide in His love, He's going to manifest Himself to you. How's He going to manifest Himself to you? There's all sorts of ways that the Father manifests. And we talked about it earlier that He'll manifest Himself, His love. You know, we, we had an awesome worship uh, time here last Sunday evening. And I'm telling you people, the love of God, I, I, it was just awesome. 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 You could just feel the love of God emanating out of your being towards people. That's God manifesting Himself to you. And another thing is is when you get on your face before God and you've got problems or you're just wanting to pray out things and, and find out how God wants you to go with a certain thing. And usually, when I need to know something, I'll fast for three days. In my third day, I usually always get an answer. The last time I fasted and prayed, I didn't get an answer the third day, but I got it the fourth day. And that's, that's the first time that ever happened. And I don't know why. I have no idea why. But I always get my answer the third day. But just that one, that's just recently. And here's a thing that might be happening. See, it has to be on my end. It's not on God's end. It'll never, it'll never be on God's end. I don't know whether I was walking out of love. I don't know whether I wasn't being attentive to Him. I, I, I tried to think and, and, and find out why I didn't get my answer the third day. I was kind of disappointed at the end of the third day and I said, well, I didn't get my answer. I even told my wife I didn't get my answer to my prayer. But the next day I was praying, you know, just having a good time with God. And he gave me my answer. I mean, it was plain and simple. That's abiding in his love. That's abiding in love. For he is love. And he's manifesting himself to you with answers. See, there's, there's many ways that God will manifest himself to his people. The world cannot have this kind of love. Not the kind of love that God's talking about. His kind of love. Because that's shed abroad in your heart when you're born again. It's just not for the world. They've got a, a, a natural kind of love. And we'll not dwell on that today. We may teach it later. Let's go to First John again, uh, three twenty-one. First John 3.21 Beloved, if a heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. 
And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments. And His commandment is to love. It says commandments here, but if you keep the commandment of love, all the other commandments just fall in line one after another. And you prove to Him that you love Him by loving and keeping His commandments. And this is a commandment that we should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus Christ, His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. And he that keepeth this commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Have you ever thought about that? That scripture. Let me find it again. 3.21 And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things which please are pleasing unto in His sight. You know, a lot of a lot of times we'll pray for certain things. You know, we need uh, we need fifteen hundred dollars. You know, we we need fifteen hundred dollars bad. So we get on our face and we pray to God, tell Him we need it, and He already knows that. And He's telling us right here, our love walk. would by all means help us to get what we want. If we do what He says, I don't think God, if, if God tells us in His Word to do things like love one another and we do those things that are pleasing in His sight, then we keep the door open for Him. I think if you, if you shirk your duty of loving one another, then you close a door. You do it. God doesn't close that door for them. If you're not hearing from God when you ask Him for answers that you have to have in your life, the very first thing I do is check up on my love wall. And I do it all the time. I check up on it all the time. Because I'm teaching it. I want to I want to be there. I want to be in that place. I want to see God manifest Himself. Not just to me, by no means. I want to see Him manifest Himself to the church. To the people. I want to see Him manifest Himself to sinners. When I lay hands on a sinner, I want to see them get healed. I want the calling card of God to be so amplified and so clear in their, their sight they can't miss Him. They, they'd have to know it was God. Yeah. The other day I got burned pretty badly from here to here. And the first thought I better get that stopped right now or I'm going to have a blister on one side of my hand as big as my whole hand. And there's a place in the Bible that says to me that the flame will not kindle upon me. I took that Scripture and I stood on it. I thought about it two days later and I had a little little pink place right there. And you still see a little pink place right there. It's not rough. It doesn't feel any different. It's not touchy. It's not, not even as big as my little fingernail. But now this, I got burnt from here to the end of my finger. It didn't manifest itself. 
Why? Because lo God loves me. I'm hearing them. background noise. I'm hearing myself reverb. Uh, that came out of the love of God. I give Him the honor and the glory for it. But i got to say one more thing. And I know this church is well versed in the words of God. You guys know the Word of God. You know how to use the Word of God. But there's people out there that do not know the Word of God. In this meeting I have at the YMCA, I had a, a lady... To, to get up and leave because I did not have a King James Version Bible. You think I'm kidding you. She said, we always use a King James Version Bible in our church. She hasn't been back in my meeting. I'm telling you, I, I, I've heard some things. I'm telling you, I, I taught the, the first people that I had in my church up in Danbury, I talk what I'm teaching right now. Probably some of the same words. And when the service was over, the lady jumped up. She said, I'll not be back. And her husband had jerked his head around and he said, why? This is the best sermon I think I've ever heard. <laughs> stepped on her toes. God stepped on her toes. God knew what she needed. The day before I, uh, let's see, what day was that now? Safri of last week. I was really concerned about that church up there, and I talked to the pastor Sunday morning, what was it, maybe two Sundays ago. Yeah, two Sundays ago, and I said uh, to him, I said, I need to talk to you after church. Um, if you don't tell me differently, I'm going to shut the church down up there. And God had talked to me that morning while I was taking a shower. I don't know why God does it. He delights Himself in talking to me in the shower. <laughs> I'm telling you, He does. You too. <laughs> and I heard these words. I don't, I'm not saying I heard a, uh, an audible voice. It just came up in me. And I heard, heard these words. Well, I come on to church and I, I'm talking to Jerry and I'd, I had already talked to the pastor and I told him what was going on. Jerry down. And um, he said, Miss Janice, come here. Miss Janice, come here. And she didn't come quick enough and he turned around and said, Miss Janice, come here now. And she come in there and looking at both of us and he said, tell Brother Benny what what you just told me coming to church this morning. And she's looking at him, she's looking at him. He said, go and tell him. Tell him exactly what you told me about him coming to church. She said, I told him that you were supposed to be back here in this church and you was coming back. Those people had rejected God. That was the words that I heard too in the shower. They, reje they rejected my words. So after the service, I go in and sit down with the pastor. Very first words he says to me, he said, Benny, he said, God don't want you upset about having to shut the doors of that church. It wasn't your fault. They rejected him. <laughs> Three witnesses. But God knew that was before it started. Why did God do that? If you read, I think it's in Mark, where the Peter and John go to the gate beautiful and heal the man that had never walked, and he leaped up and he walked, and he entered in with them into the temple, walking, leaping, praising God. And the people knew that that was he who said it 
the gay beautiful asking of alms. And Peter sharply rebukes that whole crowd. And while he's talking to them, here comes the Sanhedrin and puts them in jail. Even the man, that the crippled man. So the next morning when they get in church, Peter, Peter pre- uh, preaches to them the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why did God do that? These were the very men that killed Jesus Christ, put Him on the cross. Because God couldn't help Himself. God cannot help Himself of doing things that are good. He just can't. He can't help Himself. Why? Because He is love. He has to, he has to do those things that are good. Because that's just who He is. He just can't. He couldn't. He couldn't. Why did He create man? He knew from the very get go He was going to have a lot of trouble with these men. But God so loved that He wanted a family. And then that that wasn't enough. That wasn't even close enough. That man sinned, and he was he was taken away from God because of sin. His his sin, he, God couldn't come down and talk to him anymore. Why? Because he had sin in him. And that glory of God, that, that love glory of God that surrounds God, that aura of holiness, would reject him immediately. <laughs> But God wasn't going to give up. He already had a plan. He was going to have a son. He was going to speak words into a woman's womb and bring forth a man-child who was going to be the Savior of mankind that they wouldn't have to go to hell and spend an eternity in hell. And God so loved the world that He gave that son after He raised him up all those years, 30-some years, and he loved on him, and his son loved on him, and they had they had a, a, a an awesome communion together. Sometime it would last all night. He would go up on the mountain where there wasn't anybody else, and just just talk to his father all night long, just love on him. <laughs> where did Jesus learn that love? <laughs> Where did Jesus learn how to love like that? (laughs) Think about that now. Where did Jesus learn that? He said he'd always been with the Father. (laughs) He must have picked up on some of it anyway, hadn't he? Being with the Father. (laughs) Pretty neat. And God loved him so much, but he couldn't separate his love just for this son. He had to use His Son because of His love. He had to do this thing. He had to give His Son to the devil. To be used to the devil for three days, three nights. He had to do that because He so loved you and I. And He let that that awesome son of his born out of the heart of God made of a woman like we were we were all made of women he loved him so much that he put him on the cross so he could bring us back into communion with him think about that kind of love Abraham had that kind of love, but he knew God. He knew God. He'd talked to God face to face. He'd had communion with God. And you know today, they rode camels back then. It'd take them maybe a month to go from here to there. It'd take us an hour. 
They had plenty of time to talk to God. We're so intent on getting from there to there, we don't even think about God in, in, in that trip going from there to there. But he, he sat up on that camel, you know, and rocked back and forth, singing praises to God. I bet that old camel just, just had a rhythm about him. And all of Abraham's songs just went in with that rhythm. He could sing with her, the rhythm of their walk. <laughs> and God put this stuff in him. God will put words in your mouth. I have sung in the Spirit and interpreted them. And I, I'm thinking to myself, I can't do that. I absolutely cannot do that. God has to do it. I'd sing it in the Spirit and then sing it in, in English. You cannot convince me no way, shape, or form. My God's not awesome. Because I know He is. And some of the things that I hear people say about God, it, it's so disturbing. And sometimes you want to get angry at them. I try not to, but sometimes you want to get angry at them. Listen, I'm going over, guys. Uh, <laughs> there was a lady, she comes to our, our teaching class to lie. And um, she said, well, I need to leave at 12 o'clock so I'll be in my exercise. And she said, really, I'd like to leave five minutes early so I can get on the front row. And my wife said, well, just, just go on and get up and leave. I said, I know he, he, he's have to go over a little bit. She said, well, what do you mean a little bit? He could preach all day long. <laughs> we just let him. <laughs> And I get forgetting about time, you know. Sorry about that, guys. We're going to cut it off right there. That's my beard ribbon that, isn't it? Won't, won't go out right. Anyway, we're going to cut it off right there. And, and guys, I just pray that you, you enjoyed and, and got something out of this teaching. I want you to think about your love walk. Not as much for you yourself, but that you may please the Father and that you may please the Lord Jesus Christ so that He can manifest Himself in you and through you. That's what we're here for. You know, when we started this church and I had a talk with the Lord and I said, Lord, I'm believing You to supply all of my needs. Because everything that I get, any, any donations or whatever, I'll not ever take a salary out of them. I don't want a salary. I want to be given from the hand of God what I need. Why? I have an urgency in my spirit for God to manifest Himself to me. And I'd like for you guys to get a hold of what I, I've been talking about this afternoon. He's number one. Don't matter. You know, I understand you two guys are getting married. I'm going to tell you something that will help your marriage more than anything that you can do. Love God more than you love her. Love God more than He loves you. Or you love Him. And there's a reason for it. The more your love grows for God, the more your love will grow for Him. And your love for her. I promise you I know what I'm talking about. Build your marriage on, on loving God. And doing what God wants you to do. Here's what I say. Heck with everybody else. As long as God's pleased. And I mean that with all my heart. I mean it when I sold him. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys.